感谢你们的支持，但是还有很多人还没订阅，请不要忘记订阅、按赞、开启小铃铛。你们的支持是我们的动力，谢谢大家。I'm Andrew Clerk. I'm from beautiful sunny South Africa, and I first came to Taiwan around 19 years ago on business. I used to work in the finance industry, and、um, so I first came here 2005. I remember. And I just really loved it from from the get go. And coincidentally, I met my current married partner、uh, within the first week of being in Taiwan. So that's partly has kept me here. That's part of what kept me in Taiwan. I just really enjoy it. First of all, it's just such a cool island, you know, in the middle of Asia. So it's very centrally located. And I just like life in Taiwan. It's really easy. It's very convenient. It's extremely safe for myself coming from South Africa, one of the more dangerous countries in the world. Just being able to sit here in a park on a sunny day—it's a luxury. It's something we're not used to back home. So yeah, good one, Taiwan. But before coming here, do you know this about Taiwan? Well, my first memories of Taiwan is when I grew up as a kid. Uh, most of my toys always said at the back "Made in Taiwan,", made in Taiwan. and then I remember our neighbor in South Africa. They were、uh, he was in computers, and this was back in the 1970s. And、um, he was getting all these computer parts and things from from Taipei, and it was always so amazing to hear him talking about this this city and country abroad in Asia called Taipei in Taiwan, and it just always. It stuck with me since I was a kid, and I wanted to explore it. And thankfully, the opportunity came much later in my life, and no regrets. What do you do in Taiwan? Right now, I run an organization called Taiwan Impact Entrepreneurs (TIE) for short, and it's the largest, most active community for business owners, startups, and professional people living in Taiwan. It's not just focused on foreigners, but also local Taiwanese, and the aim is. Our motto is building great businesses together, because I previously I worked in a position where、um, I worked as an executive dealing with bankruptcies and fraud investigations, and that sort of opened my eyes up on how many businesses fail in Taiwan every year, and it was actually quite shocking. So four years ago, I decided, you know, I just want to do something about it. I come from a very well experienced business background, also grew up in a business family. So four years ago, I started TIE, and the main aim is to help people build more successful businesses in the hope that we can prevent businesses from、uh, failing or going bankrupt, just you know, due to very basic. Reasons? Do you get support from the Taiwan government in doing this? No, we we registered as a company.、Uh, we don't rely on government grants at all.、Uh, that's something which is still questionable on how much the government is actually contributing to foreign entrepreneurship. They are trying, but once again, it's a little bit too much of a mirage effect. You know, it looks great from a distance, but once you get closer, it's like, where is it?、Um, So, no, we don't get support from the government. We run it as a full, full-on business, as a company, and、um, yeah, we just provide services where we can to support entrepreneurs. So, what are some of the challenges that, to your experience or to your knowledge, some foreign businesses faces here in Taiwan? So, a culture that I never experienced before、uh, in business is the top-down management system. So, in Taiwan, it's the Person right at the top makes basically all the decisions, and not managers further down the line. Whereas in Western Western business culture, we allow managers at certain levels to make the different decisions. So for me, that was quite a, quite a new one because normally when a person would network to try and make connections in business, you would start from the bottom and work your way up. Whereas in Taiwan it was totally flipped around, <clears throat> which also has its benefits because you only have to make friends with one person in a company, and not a whole lot.、Mm-hmm. So for me that was quite unique.、Um, I've learned how to make it work to my favor. It's definitely some a 
something that a lot of foreigners coming to do business in Taiwan, they struggle understanding that concept. If you want a deci decision to be made by a company, if you company, then you have to find that top person at the top and it's not always that easy to get to them. So then let's go to more practical aspects of setting up a business in Taiwan. Having access to funding, huge problem because banks do not give loans to foreign business owners unless you've been here for say about 10 years and you run a very large sum of money through your bank accounts already. So access to funding, huge problem. Government grants and subsidies also very rare for foreign entrepreneurs. So definitely if somebody wants to come and set up business, bring a big bag of gold along. <laughs> Then the other thing that a lot of people complain about, foreign, foreign entrepreneurs complain about the language issues. Um, yes, part of that is true. Part of it I will actually debunk a little bit. I've been here for nearly 20 years. I am not good with languages, so I don't really speak any Chinese apart from very basics. But in business, no Chinese. And the way I overcome it is I just employ people who can speak native Chinese. So I really don't have a problem communicating with suppliers or anyone we have to work with. Okay. So there are ways to, to navigate around these issues. During your stay here, what have you found strange, unique or special? Wow, there are just so many things that are strange, unique and special here. So the very first one, as I mentioned, is a top-down management effect. They're very generous people. I've always had really good interactions with them, even though I don't speak much uh, Mandarin but I've never had a problem especially being visually impaired being blind I do rely a lot on other people's assistance like crossing roads and just pur purchasing things from stores I never have a problem it's people really go out of their way to help me with you know doing things how do people react to you if they know this condition? Yeah, so that's quite an interesting thing. I mean, there are a lot of visually impaired blind people walking on the streets in Taipei. Always, you know, you, you, you can clearly see them. But still, I find it interesting sometimes when I stand at a crossing, at a pedestrian crossing, people would come up to me and just ask questions. You know, they, they'll ask me, hey, what are you doing with a white stick? I mean, also, you know, I've got some visual difficulties. I mean, they look at me and they're like, but your eyes are blue. You can't be blind, you know. But I don't find these things as, you know, negative or anything. It's more people are just um, curious. They maybe they've never had close encounters with a visually impaired person, never mind a visually impaired foreigner walking on the streets. I also, I have a, I'm very impatient, so I walk incredibly fast. Um, which can be painfully um, annoying for me on, this, on the sidewalks in Taipei because first of all the sidewalks are very crowded and people do walk quite slow here. Um, so people do come up to me and they, they chat to me about it and I like it. I think it's nice. It shows you know they have interest and it's always with kindness. I've never had people saying anything rude or nasty to me at all. Many people spoke about the traffic with the cars and motorcycles trouble on the streets. How do you manage this? I live right in the center of Taipei City at uh, Taipei Main Station. One of the main reasons why I live there is because there are um, government rules and regulations about sidewalks and traffic for instance. So all sidewalks have to be pedestrian friendly meaning people wheelchair users can utilize them. So it's not like when you go outside to, let's say, Danshui or outside in the rural areas where, you know, there are steps on the sidewalks mm -hmm. between shops. So it's very disabled, pedestrian friendly Taipei city. And then also I utilize the, the traffic to guide me because the more traffic there is, the more sense of direction I have. I have a big problem when I go into, say, rural areas and there's I want to cross a road and there's no traffic because I can't hear the cars coming, especially now with electric vehicles out on the roads. You don't hear them. So for me, it's very easy in Taipei City to cross roads. Uh, first of all, a lot of pedestrians. So just follow pedestrians. 
uh, especially like say females wear like high heels you can hear them click 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 so I can walk behind them I can follow them easily and then also at traffic lights everybody makes noise when they even when they just stand at a traffic light like men tend to play with coins or keys in their pockets females tend to use their fo mobile phones a lot and it actually does make a sound I can hear it so crossing a traffic at a traffic light you just wait for the sounds to start moving and I move with, with the hope that they not go crossing a red light, obviously. Red light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Which that's... sadly a lot of people do here. You get these elderly people who do these kamikaze tricks where they just walk across the road. Yeah, so I always need to try and not to follow them. And yeah, I've just sort of basically memorized a lot of the streets. Okay. Um, is there a community of um, visible impaired people in Taiwan? Is, do you know of this kind of community? Yeah, no, they, in, in Taipei alone, there are over, I think, 62,000 registered legally blind people. That's a lot. That's a lot. No, it's a lot. But then again, also remember Taipei is a big city and uh, most people living in Taiwan are fo focused within the, you know, confines of uh, Taipei. Taipei. Yeah. So it, it actually adds up to the, the world averages for what it should be. So yeah, there, there are many different communities. There are a number of other foreigners. I always thought I was the only foreign blind, visually impaired foreigner in Taiwan. And then actually quite a few started popping up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they are quite, quite a good support network. The government, however, does not yet really recognize foreigners with disabilities. Um, they are in the process of starting to accept that there are foreigners who's who have lived in Taiwan for a very long period of time. Some of them, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And then they become disabled or they reach retirement age. But the government does not recognize their, their disabilities. So fortunately, a, a massive campaign started last year about, you know, making the government aware of us. And they, they slowly but surely starting to adapt to it. Um, but still a very long way to go. One thing that we have to remember, the Taiwanese government is a very young government to any world standards. It's probably one of the younger ones out there at the moment. Um, and also it's gone through quite a lot of, um, it morph, morphed quite a lot since, you know, since when was it, 1949. Something like yeah, when it started, when the first governments really arrived, formal governments started arriving here, it changed a lot. So what we have today is basically a toddler of a government and you can't expect everything to be perfect. You know, you can't expect a toddler to speak many different languages and accept many different cultures and practices. So. I have to give a bit of credit to the government. They, they are trying, they are working towards changing things. But yes, there are still a lot of red tape. Some foreigners' expectations of a Taiwanese government, I feel, are unreasonable. Like foreigners always complain about the banking system and quite a number of other things. And it's, you have to look at it that even in a person's own home country, in my home country of South Africa, a foreigner can't just walk in there and get a bank loan. You can't. You have to live it. You have to contribute. You have to uh, participate in and be part of society before you can have certain privileges. Not, not everything is your, your birthright. Some things are privileges earned. Yeah, that's right. So I do feel, yes, there are certain areas where the government is faulting. Um, but they are in the process of addressing it. Unfortunately, with many things, it takes a lot to push a government to start recognizing there are areas that need to be improved on. They do have a tendency to try and please the world stage. Taiwan wants to become part of the United Nations. So the Taiwanese government would go and they would pub publicly say things and they would in bring in um, legal acts and laws in order to Please. showcase that they really care about um, the world and other countries. 
but then back home they don't practice what they preach. Um, a very good example of this is, I think it's 2014, the government brought out a dis uh, Disability Act, where uh, the Rights for dis Disabled People Act, where they actually stated, they brought out a law saying that all people with disabilities will be treated equally in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's written like that in Chinese. So when you translate it, it means all people. So it, it, does, it doesn't, in theory, it doesn't matter whether you are a, a born Taiwanese or a migrant worker or an illegal immigrant mm -hmm. or foreigners, immigrants like ourselves. That law states that each person with a disability must get equal treatment. Mm -hmm. And the government brought that law out in order to please the United Nations to um, be aligned with the United Nations policies. And since uh, 2014, 10 years ago when they brought it out, they basically just swept it under the carpet. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Taiwanese government is at fault on certain things, mm -hmm. but I think on other things it, it's it's a young government. Give them some time to grow up. They, they need to learn a lot of things. Don't be too harsh on them. Right. Um, many of us, we do come from older nations, you know, especially if you're from Europe, even the US, for instance, you know, it's, it's very well established governments and countries and give, give Taiwan some time to grow up. You know, it's, this is also a toddler having to fight off big bullies continuously all the time you know they've got their neighbor that's just causing so much trouble <laughs> that's right it, it's they focus is the government officials focus is not just 100 percent on how can we please every foreigner who wants to come and come and settle in taiwan what advice would you give to someone who wishes to come to taiwan i'm going to pull a philosophical one on this it's be grateful for what you have and the opportunity that that you're given you know, it's such a great experience to come and live in Taiwan and experience the culture and the food and everything that this country, country this island country has to offer. Mm -hmm. Just appreciate it. Stop trying to complain about little things. Stop comparing Taiwan to your home country. There are just too many foreigners who come here and they're like, oh, it's so much be better in my own home country. Then go back to your own home country. So... I would say just, just appreciate what you have. It doesn't matter how small and how little it is. Just be thankful and grateful and just come and enjoy the place and leave your problems behind. If you had to share any South African culture with Taiwanese, what part of South African culture would you like to? In South Africa, everyone talks to everyone. If you're standing at a, waiting at a traffic light, you just turn and start talking to the person next to you. You've never seen or met the person, you probably will never again, but you just, you greet each other, you say, hello, how's it going? You know, nice day, where are you from? People chat to each other nonstop. Like in supermarkets, for instance, if you stand in line at the checkout, you just start talking to people. It's natural, it's normal. And I've made some incredible friends and connections that way. So that's something that I do miss in Taiwan, is just that personal communication, that don't be shy, just turn around, just greet, smile, say hello. Um, stop being so glued on your phone. There is a world outside of that phone, you know, um, which is unfortunately something we see a lot in Taiwan. People just walk on the streets with their okay. phones or they sit in restaurants with family members, loved ones, friends and they're all on their phones. Mm -hmm. Leave it, drop it, it's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to change anything in Taiwan, what would it be? I think the pollution is still quite an issue. It is a, the air pollution. It used to be a lot worse uh, before the MRT system came into place. So it is getting better, but I think it's still a big problem. They need to start changing over more to electric vehicles. I, it blows my mind that there are still, what's it, I think 10 million uh, petrol scooters on the roads in Taiwan. It's crazy. The, the government should really just bring a law in and just make everything electric vehicles. That would make a huge difference to the uh, pollution in, in, 
in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And the noise pollution is also quite a big one in Taiwan, but perhaps, you know, using electric vehicles would partly solve that issue as well. Do you have anything else to tell Taiwanese people? Yeah, well, <coughs> first of all, well done on, crea on creating such a wonderful country and keep it up, you know, it's Taiwan is a wonderful place. It's really nice to be here. I'm very grateful and I really appreciate everything that they offer. I mean, ultimately, this is a country that was created by the people. Mm -hmm. I would say deep down, it's really the culture that makes it. You know, look how safe it is. People don't steal. They, you know, honor and respect other people. So absolutely, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, for creating this wonderful island country. I love all the noises going on, going around me. It's, it's such a vibrant place. Okay. All right, um, thank you very much and hope you continue to flourish here in Taiwan. Yeah, thank you so much thank and you. all the best, yeah. you know, with, with your mission here as well. It's amazing what you guys are doing and I really appreciate it. Kasih saling dong, ni mana jis si si wong mana dong li, si si ada jah.